So, young Matt from Humpty Doo, from all places. If you don't know where Humpty Doo is, it's in the, it's up near Darwin in the Northern Territory, which is a long way from where we are. So, we can't just pop into Humpty Doo and have a look at what Matt's up to. So, here we go. We're going to read his email and then we're going to answer it to the best of our ability. Here we go. Greetings, Bush Bee Man. Have you experienced bees not building on particular frames? I have flow frames in my top box, top on the box number three, and the girls just don't seem to dig it. My hive came from a wild storm. <laughs> wild storm. <laughs> oh, I'm terrible at reading. That's why I'm not a news presenter. My hive came from a wild swarm that had set up camp in an old lounge suite. I relocated the entire lounge to my rural property to prevent them from being exterminated, which is what we all do when we're doing a cutout. We're trying to rescue the ladies and to buy them some time. I removed the bees and the comb and placed them in two boxes, but needed more room for all their comb. I added a third super with a queen excluder and a mix of the remaining comb and flow frames. The girls evacuated their comb and have never been back and they didn't build on the flow frames either. So I replaced a couple of flow frames with timber frames and wax sheets, but still nothing. Some of the girls, this is my favorite part of this email. Some of the girls did enter the top box, but I think it was just to form a picket line to keep everybody else out. Ah, oh, golly, I love that, Matt. G'day, B-Man, Matthew from the Northern Territory. This is my little problem hive that I've uh, written emails about. As you can see, I've got the flow hive on the top. I've got uh, the middle super and, of course, the bottom. We've got queen excluder in here, which is one of those little bamboo jobbies. But uh, as you can see through the window, which I've just opened up for you, there's bugger all building going on in there. As you can see, the, uh, the black comb is some of the original stuff from the original uh, hive. And then I've got uh, some standard frames in there and I've also got the flow frames. But they just aren't building in there. Question is, why? Thanks, Matt, for that question. It looks like you've done a good job rescuing the bees from that blooming lounge suite. You've got them in your box. Let's delve into what might be the problem. My first thought is if you've got three boxes stacked up, the ladies have got more than enough room. So what I would intend, what I would start to do, first of all, is remove your top third box with your flow frames and your other frames. Get rid of that. If there's no bees up there, they don't need that room. Now have a look in the next layer. So in the next two boxes, I'm assuming you've still got your cutout frames in there. Try to shake the bees off of those frames and get yourself some new wax, like this, wax frames, that they can start to build a nice foundation on build that out and make a nice nest and then you want to shake out your cutouts from underneath and put them above the queen excluder this is going to get complicated isn't it i'm going to sound very complicated maybe we need to show you this but anyway you we're going to give you a go at talking it through you talking it through you talking through it talking through how does that go anyway we're going to do a verbal explanation and confuse the shit out of you the same as every other beekeeper that you asked about this question i'll bet you like there is so this is like when you're at the bee club and you're going up ask the old beekeeping man what do you do with the extra queen cells and he says well you could go and put them in over here and you could move this and do that and everything else and by the time he's given you the 20 minute spiel about what you should have done you've forgotten what your question is because you're that jolly confused so hopefully that's not the case here what I think you need to do is get organised with this amount of room the ladies need. And that's pretty easy to judge when you take the top box away. If there's no bees up there, you don't need that for a start. So place that out the way. Have a look at the top of the frames and then decide which where is the most bees. If the frames in that second box, the bees are all on top of the frames and you pull one out and there's plenty of young larvae and eggs and stuff going on there, then you want to take that next box off and have a look in the bottom box and see if your nest is that big. If your nest is big enough for two boxes, well, that's all well and good. But you want to start replacing some of the old cutout frames, get them to start laying on some nice new stuff which they need to build out and turn into some beautiful wax frame foundation that you can actually work. And then you can start getting rid of this. If they're put queen excluded on top of your first box, and actually put, get the bees that are, get the young laid brood frames empty above the queen excluder. So get the girls to hatch them out, 
get all the bees down the bottom and then start replacing those frames and perhaps put your flow frames above that queen excluded with just the one box. Because the bees, they're not stupid. They are not actually, they're not actually, they're not actually collecting honey for you. <laughs> now this is the one thing Big is trying to get the memo. The bees are not collecting the honey for us. That is not the point of the exercise. They're collecting honey for their own winter stores or their own future needs. And so they're not, and they're not, how do I put this? Being that they're women, they don't waste a whole lot of time doing stupid shit. So if they don't need to build Jolly up the top because they, they don't need that room, they won't go up there because it's not how it works. They're just going to use the space they have available and when they run out of space, then they go to the next level. And you quite often you see in, especially in Europe, they'll have bloody stacks of these boxes up and up and up and up full of honey. And that's all well and good, but here in Oz that doesn't seem to work for me anyway. I don't know, I've never had a beehive that's been 20 boxes high full of honey. Good on you in Europe, that's what I reckon. <laughs> but anyway, where am I going with this? The other thing I've found when you have a plastic frames, if you have a whole lot of plastic frames in the top of your box, there seems to be this, because there's a certain scent in a plastic frame bees don't really like. These have had a bit of wax on them which I find works quite well as long as you wax this part as well. So then the smell of the bee and the plastic and the whole thing doesn't stink like it should, like, well, doesn't smell like plastic for a start. And I, I would be in an interesting thought on that is that obviously bees have some sort of sense of smell. Because when you go there and you breathe on them, they know you're there because they can smell your breath. There has been some conjecture about people saying that they get excited if you're there smoking. Well, I don't know. I've never been in there smoking because of bloody hell, it's too expensive to smoke these days. <laughs> and down here in Oz, anyway, the full things are like $2 a cigarette. I can think of a lot cheaper ways to kill myself. So if you've got a flow frame, I've got a new flow frame here that the lovely wife got for her flow hive because you wouldn't believe it. Some bush bee man who was trying to be helpful put the flow hive in a bath which was, had some chlorine in it. And he thought, well, that'd be a good idea. But if you put your flow frame in chlorine, it rusts out the little wires and then the whole thing fell apart. So I had all these cool little blooming sheets, basically in pieces all over my bucket. So uh, you can, they were always in more shit than I normally am. I'm in the shit normally when I steal stuff out of a kitchen, but mate, you should have seen her face when I pulled these out of the chlorine bucket. They went, Phew. Anyway, luckily, luckily you weren't here filming to see that moment because she was not impressed. So anyway, we got some new ones. And so my thought is, if you get your new frames, quite often people will say, get some wax and roll on the outside, but also roll it along this bit. Roll some wax along the, all the plastic stuff, or hell, better yet, like dip that end in and that end in and then just get your roller and put it across the top. I've done that, and with varying degrees of success. My main thought is, Bees are gonna go up here when they get desperate. I mean, you get into some guys that are in the real honey flow and there's nectar and crap going everywhere. They don't do any of that. They just, they'll put a plain old plastic frame in the jolly thing with no wax and the bees will build on it because they have run out of room and they just need to build somewhere. So really, I think room is your biggest issue. So just reduce them down, get them organised. And the cool thing about that is once you get them on some cool new foundation frames, you can start doing splits. And hell, never know, there at Humpty Doo, you might be able to have a thing on your little Facebook page saying, Lounge Sweet Bees for Sale. <laughs>